What's going on folks, Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salzburg, Maryland. So I just posted the video of the Siamese kit. Uh, you can see that, just Google Siamese kit. It's a way that you can pair two pressure washers that both have trapped pressure unloaders um, and are set roughly about the same PSI. Um, and it's obviously ideal if they're pretty close. You wouldn't want to necessarily pair an 8 and a 3. Uh, you probably could, but it wouldn't be a good idea. But ultimately you need a trap pressure unloader. Similar flow, similar PSI, you put them together, but you can't run a flow unloader and a trap pressure unloader. So what is that? What's the difference? Well, I got a whole mess of unloaders um, and one flow unloader. So we'll start with, and actually let's see here. If you've been watching the channel for a while, here is a basic pump. This right here is your unloader. It's a built-in unloader. You've got your little chem pickup tube there. You can see that right there. This is a Comet ZWD uh, 4036. So it's four gallons a minute. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. Four gallons a minute, 3600 PSI. Um, direct drive. Again, the fact that the unloader is built into it is why when the unloader goes, woo, you just toss it. We still have this because sometimes the check valves inside these things can be reused for stuff. Um, other pressure washers, and let's see. Something's busted in this one. This is a five gallon a minute. This is a uh, RKV 5.5 gallon per minute. Uh, either four, th uh, uh, yeah, 4,000 PSI. See this. So your water inlet, your pressure outlet. Now this does not have the unloader on it. The unloader we would put separately on here. And actually, yeah, see, see that top of that uh, right here got busted pretty bad. Not really sure how that happened, but it happened. So on that one, again, what we did is we quick connected the outlet of it. So that way we can put a quick connect, um, either plug or, or quick coupler, depending on how you want to do male or female, whatever you want on there. Um, so we can swap an unloader in and out pretty quickly. Some, some websites, they'll show them doing the metric fittings where you just twist your unloader on, twist your unloader off. Um, kind of how a JIC fitting or a swivel fitting would work. So that you don't have to take that water portion, that water um, nipple or, or whatever, or barb off. Because when you try and spin this around, it hits that. It's just a pain. Um, so anyways, pressure unloader. This, which one is this here? Uh, I want to say this is a Pulsar. But I'm not 100% sure. Most of them... Um, what you'll probably have is something more like this. This is a VRT3 unloader. These come pretty standard on a lot of units. They're just really basic. Most times you're going to just set the pressure on it initially with your correct high pressure tip and your pressure gauge. Um, and then you just leave it alone. With an unloader, you're going to have your inlet. You can also, some of them, you can have them um, either do bottom or the front here. This is the way it's coming out. You'll see this will be the shorter side. This will be the bigger side. And let me show you inside here. This is going to be a bit more challenging. But if you can see see that little ball, that's what happens in there. And again, this one's busted. But basically when the water is going through, it's allowing this gate to be open. And then as soon as you back up the pressure, the water is no longer forcing through there. It closes. And then the water goes out this bypass port. <clears throat> now this, you can actually mount it so it can either come in this way or it can go in this way. You only have one outlet on here. And then you have two different options for your bypass. So if, you know, just the way that it's oriented, let's say it's going like this and you want to have it coming out that side, you can. Or if it's better oriented that your tank's on this side, you can have it coming out that side. And then you just throw a plug in the other side of it. So that's your trap pressure ones. 
And then here we have a flow a motor. Um, this one is zeromatic. Um, this one you can actually, if I remember correctly, one you can bypass out the bottom of this. It's a big sinking one. Um, I believe one of these ones, and this might be it, but we can actually run two guns off of. I've never run two guns off of one unit. I don't like the idea. I'd rather just give each guy their own machine and go nuts with it. Um, the difference, though, when you guys have a, a trap pressure on loader, when you pull that, tr you pull that trigger, now you get that first blast that comes out of it real quick. And it might not be a huge blast, but you've got that trapped pressure and it shoots out and then it gets down to its regular pressure with a flow tra or with a flow unloader what happens is that when you're not spraying that water goes back into your in your tank just like it will with that but the whole line is not loaded with pressure at that point so until you actually go through and then when you pull the trigger and those are the ones and you're going to see it more on like a eight gallon a minute or higher unit and it'll You'll pull the trigger, it's not full force, and then it goes zoom, and then you're full force. Um, that's what will happen with a flow on motor. So it's nice there. It's supposed to be less wear and tearing your equipment, less wear and tearing your, your hoses and everything. Um, an easier pull when you, you pull the trigger. It is more difficult to use something like that with a ball valve to just ball valve it um, because you can make it go off and on. Um, another thing, if in the course of doing work, you're hearing this thing keep going hot. Oh, you're hearing it go click, 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 or, you know, every 10, 15, 20 seconds goes click, click. What that's telling you is somewhere in there, you've got a leak. It could be a leak at your gun. It could be a leak at your ball valve. It could be a leak in the hose and the swivel. Somewhere between this and the nozzle, there's a leak. And that will cause us to go bad quickly. You can take these apart. This part can actually be wrenched off. This does not have part of the, um, actually, sorry, that, that part's fine. Um, as we showed with this, all you're doing is you're popping this part off, taking that nut off. This whole thing will come basically straight off. It might need to spin off. Um, <clears throat> and then you're left with this. I can wrench this part off, make sure that the ball inside is still good. See if there's some trash, if there's some Teflon tape, if there's a stone or pebble or whatever could be causing it. Um, unloaders will go wrong for all kinds of reasons. There are rebuild kits, um, but you absolutely, absolutely, if you're in business, you should have one of these on your unit. You should have two of them in your box uh, because they're temperamental. And sometimes there could be other things that could be going on. Check and make sure that your water supply is good because you may just think that it's your unloader, but actually... There could be some leaves in your stuff, and then that's what's causing you to have pressure issues. Um, but um, and never run a pressure washer without an unloader unless you've got a dump gun, um, which, quite frankly, if you're watching one of these, you probably don't even know what that is. Um, but because what will happen when your unloader goes, it will no longer bypass water back somewhere, and so all that does is just create build, 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 build find a weak spot, and bust open your hose. Um, which is not fun. Trust me, it is not fun uh, early on when your hose blows and you don't have 400 extra feet sitting on your trailer or truck like I do now. So um, that's on letters again. Trapped pressure. And again, we, we've got the quick connect fittings on this. This seized on, so you know, we don't, whatever. These are all spare parts. If we need to get an adapter or whatever, we'll pull off of them. Um, throw these away. Here's another. They can also look like this. You may see it with just the blue screen or blue spring, green spring, whatever. Um, and actually, let me find one more thing for you. This one is the pulsar. It's it's a little bit more rounded. Um, the eight gallon a minute ones are usually a half inch inlet versus these ones are three quarter. This is what I'll show you with the, um, we would normally put our quick connect coupler on the 
um, on the mounting spot for the engine or for the outlet for the high pressure side and then we would just plug that in we've got the hose barb on here and then we got a quick connect out we run quick connects out female plugs uh, our male plugs on the inlet side of it all <coughs> most of those um, unloaders are also going to be rated for uh, like for a VRT3 is going to be rated between four to seven gallons per minute you can use that on an eight if you had to but again you're going to need that adapter or you can use an eight gallon a minute unloader on a smaller unit to get through the day don't do that by default you don't want to do that long term but again if you're stuck in the field a half inch to three quarter or three eighths adapter can keep you washed and get you home so hope that helps guys have a great night